So I am Tripta, uh, and I am going to talk about uh, generating bilayer asymmetry and membrane curvature using an enzyme catal catalyst. So I I am at ISA Mohali, and uh, I joined just 20, 20 in 2021. And the lab, the first microscope in the lab that we got was in actually Jan 2022. So uh, this work that came out, it's the first work from the lab that got published. So I want to talk about it today. This was also highlighted uh, by other journals. Uh, and I also thank for the funding to ISR and also reentry grant, also the DBT. Uh, we are also socially active if you want to get in touch with me. Okay. So what are we doing in the lab? So we want to uh, ask a question uh, that if we have a cell and then there is a plasma membrane and there are many membrane bound organelles in the cell, what's the role of asymmetry in those membranes? So to simplify it, when I take lipid molecules, these are biological lipid molecules and I put these molecules in water, they self assemble. There is some equilibrium bilayer thickness based on whatever interactions are present. And at equilibrium, there will be some equilibrium area per molecule in that bilayer. Now, what we are asking is, let's say now I make this bilayer asymmetric. By asymmetric, I mean I change the lipid molecules in one leaflet with respect to the other leaflet. So I call this as, let's say, uh, in this picture, I call this as top leaflet and down leaflet, if, if you like. So what happens if I change the molecules in one leaflet to other leaflet? Of and also, when I bend this bilayer, whether I bend it this way or that way, it costs energy. What happened to the bending modulus in the presence of asymmetry? Also, what happened to the membrane tension? So we know these are all uh, symmetric membranes and these are uh, quantified for different membranes composed of biological lipids. We are interested what happened in the presence of asymmetry. So the outline of the talk is I will introduce a little bit what is membrane asymmetry, remodeling, experiments, outlook and acknowledgement. So if we look at uh, an image in the cell, it's very crowded environment. So as asymmetry is there in the cell, everywhere. The simplest experiment I, I thought in the lab, because it's the first project in the lab, I wanted to create these compartments. So this is a compartment that are made up of biological lipids, just one, lip, one kind of lipid. And we make these compartments. This is cell size. So this is like 20 micrometer radius of compartment. It exhibit thermal fluctuations. And these are observed in the optical microscope. We see it. This is just Brownian motion due to the Brownian motion in, in the solution. And we get this contrast because the refractive index of the medium inside is different from the refractive index of the medium outside. So it's a phase contrast microscopy we are using. Now, this blue color circle is this, mem this compartment. So I have some solution inside and outside. In this case, this is sucrose. And what happens if I add a, an enzyme outside? What will it does? It does it, 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 what will it do to the membrane is the first question we thought we want to ask. Because we want to create asymmetric membrane. So we started with this simple problem. So when I add this enzyme, which is a sugar cleaving in, in, enzyme, so it cleaves sucrose into fructose and glucose. So then it cleaves, the bond is broken, and then it creates an asymmetry, not in the leaflet, but in the solution. So the environment, the solution inside the compartment is different from the solution outside. So the two leaflet of the membrane now face a different environment and the membrane is asymmetric. And now the question we are asking is what it does to the membrane. So what we found is that it creates positive curvature and in the form of buds and it can also form tubes. So it, it starts exhibiting uh, shape changes in the membrane compartment. So to start with, I had a vesicle like this, giant unilamellar vesicle. And I could get conformation like this if when the moment I make it asymmetric. So this is one conformation. This is just an example where this is the same mother vesicles with now two outbursts. And this is also a mother vesicle with two outbursts. Now these, there is a difference between this and this conformation. I call it 1 plus 1 and 2 plus 0. Because here, there is a neck. So this whole thing is connected. It's a fluid membrane. It's not fission. There's no fission yet happened. 
So it's a single membrane which now has two buds, which budded. So here the neck between the small and the large vesicle is of one type. And here there is another type of neck between the two small vesicles, if two small buds. So there are two different kind of necks here, membrane necks. So there is one here, small, large, if you like. Here there is small, large and small, small. So that's why these conformations are different. Now, in the, this work is done uh, because I said to you that I start the I got a microscope in January and that time I had no student. So my colleague uh, Abhishek, uh, sorry, Abhishek Chaudhary, who is also in the Department of Physics, he had a student and he who wanted to do experiment. So basically, I started this project with not my student but their students, uh, who now we also now have a joint student who actually now want to continue doing experiment. So these are the people who are on the paper. So Mayur, Abhimanyu, Akshi, Abhishek, Chaudhary, Shubhrabrata Mathi, who is in the chemistry department, and Professor Liposki, who is in Potsdam, Germany. So these are some of the experimental data I want to show you. So that exhibit the shape transformation in the presence of asymmetry. So all of the, all, in all of these conditions, there is an asymmetry across the membrane. So in this case, there is a formation of inbud and I'm going from top to the bottom, like I'm going from the one pole to the other pole and that's why it's coming in the focus and going out of the focus. There is an inbud. In this case, there is an outbud. In this case, there are many, many tubules inside. And in this case also, it bulges and form buds out, outward. So many different kind of things can happen based on what kind of asymmetry I create across the membrane. Now the question is, how do I quantify this asymmetry that I am creating? I'm, I want to control it and how do I quantify it? What is the physics, physical parameter to quantify it? So then I told you that I have put an invertase outside uh, in, the, in the bulk. So this is the normal uh, enzyme substrate kinetics and one can quantify the rates. So we have, uh, so uh, Professor Methi and uh, his student, they have done this uh, rate quantification for this was not in the presence of the compartment but they have found that you know if I take a concentration of 300 millimolar sucrose in which I make my compartments then it takes about four hours uh, when there is no more uh, sucrose left in the bulk. So then we know that okay something the enzymes start working uh, at equal to zero let's say when I add it and then it converts, converts, converts and it takes four hours and after four hours there is no more sucrose left and there is a complete asymmetry across the membrane. What happens in t equal to zero to t equal to four hours, it's a completely non-equilibrium state, it's not in equilibrium because the, there is an asymmetry created, generated and there are different rates which one can measure actually which I'm not going to talk about today. So I'm not going to talk about what happened at t equal to 0 to t equal to 4, four hours. What I'm going to show you and what we published in the paper is what happened after 4 hours. So it is in equilibrium state. 2 plus 2. Yeah. So then uh, uh, Professor Liposky, uh, he, I mean, I, I spoke with him and then he is also a part of the paper where he says that, okay, uh, I mean, this is a Helfrich, in the Helfrich energy when we write, we have a curvature energy. And this is the bending modulus, there is mean curvature and spontaneous curvature. So now the experimentally when we want to quantify membrane asymmetry or any kind of asymmetry, this is, uh, this is what the parameter that we want to estimate from the experiment. So we, 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 were, we want to extract M. Now asymmetry can be different depending on what we do to the membrane, how we create it. So these are some of the examples. So they, they, these are some previous publication that I had working with him and also Professor Ifsen. I don't have a photo of him. So uh, these are different system. So I can have an asymmetry, you know, I, I have a fixed boundary. I have fixed number of lipids and I want to add more. So the only way it can accommodate those guests, if you like, if it could bend in, in a certain way. So it could form tubes or buds. Uh, so these are different examples. You can look at it. So now, so after we quantify that M, estimate that, so we, this is the value that we got. So this was one example where from one GUV, we got three conformation uh, where all are equally probable. Actually in the inequilibrium, we found equal number of states for this and this and this. So there is a probability normally we thought will be associated, whether it's referred to be in this state or that state. 
but it seems like in equilibrium we we have to we could not find maybe in non equilibrium state we could have some different rates for having different kind of bulging so here you can see there are different kinds of necks and this is the parameter we found which means that this is for this kind of asymmetry that we created this is the estimate of the spontaneous corresponding spontaneous curvature and this is very very relevant in case of biological membranes which are highly asymmetric with different kinds of lipids and protein if you go around in the in the cell outside the cell and at at the end uh, we have a lot of asymmetry activity in the lab so this uh, this guy just got graduated and these are other students with smile i don't have photo for these two and uh, so far we have uh, uh, these publications and i also want to highlight this advertisement that just came out for the women postdoc so they can talk to me if anybody is interested so we have equal number of uh, women and men in the lab as uh, student and collaborators if you like so thank you very much for your attention we are open for questions so uh, nice talk um, so most of the important processes in the life are governed by having a concentration um, gradient of ions across the cell membrane so let's say if you do that in this system what happens yes so uh, if there is a concentration gradient of ions uh, then we have seen spontaneous bending so in this paper uh, there was a concentration gradient and in the presence of protein which are only attached to the one leaflet so there is a positive spontaneous so it's if it's bulging outward it's positive inward it's negative so there was a positive spontaneous curvature like that so it it can vary with different uh, ions it need not be the same this value of m that you showed the error bar is huge no i mean it's almost half the mean value yes is that what generally happens in these systems or yes so we had like um, the thing is like we are uh, collecting the data and i didn't wanted to hide it because that just means that you know uh, so how do we quantify it we actually go to these shapes and normally what we are doing is calculating the neck curvature which we cannot optically resolve so we just assume that you know this is closed and from the neck curvature we actually estimate the because in order to get m in from this we are using this equation so we have a limitation because you know this cannot get i mean the, if this is equal to this then this this is minimized it cannot become greater than m so uh, we use a neck boundary condition and this is the kind of error we get in order to reduce the error uh, we need to go to super resolution microscopy where we could uh, because we have to calculate mean curvature very close to the neck where it is connected and we have we have limitation by optical microscopy also so this is all done by optical microscopy uh, so 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 what is keeping the neck stable so what happened like there must be very high bending energy cost at the neck or is uh, it totally dissociated and lipid molecules uh, no, so um, so uh, there are some uh, so if you look at this paper so we showed that uh, this was in my post doc with him so we showed that if we increase keep on increasing the asymmetry then it can cleave the neck and there is a neck fission so the asymmetry also acts like a force at the neck which can create two compartment from a single compartment so uh, yeah but so 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 the bilayer is very bent at the i mean it is super bent right yes it's when i say neck is closed so it's like we have a neck head and body so it's when so basically there's no so there neck it just channel, closed there is a channel between yeah there is a channel between yeah tripta so in your lab is it possible to track the asymmetry parameter dynamically yes. for example when you have this for example some asymmetric shape then they pinch off Yes. and when the you have these new buds at the time of formation there's again sym symmetrical so then i would say the asymmetry would drastically drop to zero before it rises again is it possible to track it as a yes, function of yes so time? in this plot that i showed so uh, the images that i'm showing it's only after 4 hours so if we we have data from 0 to 4 hours so there the neck is not stable and the shape is continuously changing so if if you if you look at this movie that i tried to show you 
so there it shows the formation of the neck for example if you see this one uh, you see this this is the kind of dynamics we have so there is a formation of neck here and here so it, from this video yes measure m as a function of time yeah we can we 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 can measure m as a function of time but then we cannot use the neck closed neck condition because neck is we can only use that when neck is closed but we can use it when it get into some shapes where neck is closed 